Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can add collection into your games. So let me go ahead and show you some examples that I made. So the first one is pretty simple. Whenever the player touches the part here, it's going to convert that part into a coin up in the corner up here. So if I run into the part, it gets rid of the part and converts it into a coin. Okay, the next one is very similar. So this one, whenever I bump into this part here, it's going to get rid of it. But instead of giving me one coin, it's going to give me a random number of coins. So if I run into it, then I see that it gave me a random number of coins. The next one over here, if I bump into this part, it gives me one point, but then teleports to a new location. And then if I bump into this part again, it'll do the same thing. It'll give me one coin and then go to a new spot. Okay, and this last one's a little bit different. This one I actually have to pick up and bring to a selling area. So if I run into this one, it picks up the part, and then I have to bring it over to this green pad to sell it. So whenever I step onto this green pad, it's going to get rid of the part and convert it into a coin. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to step on the green pad. It got rid of the part and gave me one coin up here in the corner. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so what we're going to do for this video is we're going to first start by setting up a leaderboard for the game. And then we're going to go through each part and take a look at his script. And I'll explain how each one works. So the first thing you have to do for this is set up leaderboard so that you have somewhere to post the coins or the points. So let's go ahead and take a look at that script. So if you want to set up leaderboards for your games, you need to put a script under the server script service over in the explorer menu. And then if we open up that script, let's go ahead and take a look. So what the script is doing down here at the bottom, every time a player joins, it's going to run this function right here. And what this function is doing is for each player that joins the game, it's creating a folder for that player where it's going to store its leader stats. The next part down here is where you're going to define your coins or whatever currency you want to use for your games. So basically the way it works is we're making a new int value and we're giving it the name coins. But if you want to change this to something else like points or gold or something like that, you can put that new name here. After that, we're giving our new int value a name. So you can keep this the same as the variable name if you want to. So I just said coins.name is equal to coins. So this is the part, though, that's going to show up in the leaderboard. So whatever name you want to give your currency, make sure you put that here. Okay, next we're setting the initial value for it. So my initial value for my coins is equal to zero. But if you want to start players off with maybe like 10 coins or something like that, you can put that number here. Okay, that's all there really is to the leaderboard part of it. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the scripts on the parts. So we're going to take a look at the first one now, and this one is when the player bumps into the part, it gives them a coin. So let's go ahead and take a look at that script. So the first thing I'm doing up at the top here is just storing that part into a variable. Next, we're using a touch event that runs the function called collect. And inside my function here, the first thing I'm doing is I'm storing the player information. And I'm doing that by looking under game.players. And then I'm using this find first child function. And then this section right here, what this is, this function takes in a parameter called other part. And this is going to be whatever other part comes in contact with this part. So if the player touches this part, then other part will likely be a body part of the player. We're saying other part.parent. So we're using that body part to find the player it belongs to. And then from there, we're taking its name. Next, if it's able to find that player, which is what this line right here is doing, then I'm going to reference its leader stats, and then its coins part, and then its value, and then I'm going to be setting it equal to the same thing, plus whatever value you want to do. So in my first example, every time the player touches this part, it increases the coins by one. If you want to change this to two, three, or some other number, then you would put that part right here. Okay, after it gives that player a coin, it's going to get rid of this part by saying part colon destroy. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this next one is very similar to what we just did, but rather than give the player one point, it gives the player a random number of points. The only part that's different is down here at the end. The part that you're adding to the coins value is math.random. And then this 1, 100 is the values it chooses between. So it's going to give them a random number of coins between 1 and 100. 
So obviously you can adjust these bounds to make it whatever random amount that you want. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this next one is the one that when you bump into it, it teleports to a new location. So this script is a little bit more involved, so let's go ahead and just start at the top. So like in other scripts, this line right here is just storing the part inside of a variable. And I'm using one additional variable in this script, and I'll explain it once we get to it later on. So this is also using a touch event that's running a function called collect. Inside my function here, the first thing I'm doing is storing the player information, like I did in the first script. If it's able to find that player, then the first thing we're going to do is check to see if add point is true. In the beginning here, we set add point to true, so it's going to run this script right here. The next thing it's going to do is set add point equal to false, and I'll explain why we're doing this in just a second. Okay, after it does that, then it's setting the coins value to its original coins value plus one, so basically just adding a coin to the leader stats. Next, we're setting its part.position equal to a new position, and we're doing that by saying vector3.new. And the position, the way it's going to work, is we're changing its x and its z position, which is like forward, backwards, left, and right. We don't want to change its y position because that controls the up and down position of it. So we're setting its new position equal to some random number between negative 100 and 100. And you can change these bounds depending on where your part is located in the game. To get an idea of what your bound should be, though, if you go under your part here and look at its properties, you can find its position to see what its current position is. And another thing that you can do is you can move this part left and right and see how the numbers change. So for example, if I want my part to be able to go between this position right here, which is negative 38, and this position here, which is 2, then I can put those numbers for the x position. If going in the forward and backwards direction, if I want it to go between here, that would be negative 42. And here, that would be 5. And that lets me know my bounds for the Z position. Okay, so now heading back to the script. So what we did here, like I said before, is we're setting the X and the Z position to random numbers. This part right here is optional. The only reason I changed the color of the part was just to make it easier when I was doing this video. Okay, after it goes to a new position, I'm waiting one second and setting add point back equal to true. And the reason I'm using this add point variable is if I didn't, then as long as I'm touching that part, it would be adding points. So by doing this, it's basically like turning the on and off that feature. So when I first touch that part, it's true. Then immediately I'm turning it off so it doesn't keep adding points. And then once it teleports to a new position, then I'm turning that feature back on. So once it's in its new spot, then it has the ability to add points for me again. Okay, so that's it for this script. Next, we're going to head to the next one. This one is set up a little bit differently. There's no script on this part itself, and this is the one where I pick it up and move it to the green selling pad. So the way this one works, this one is actually a tool with a part inside of it called handle, and then the actual script is under the selling pad. So if we take a look at the selling pad and open up that script, this part is just storing that part inside of a variable. It's also using a touch event, and inside my function here, like in all the other ones, I'm storing the player information in a variable called player. If it's able to find that player. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm finding the player's model in the workspace by referencing player.name, which is the player's name. Next, I'm referencing the tool. And I'm doing that by looking under the player's model. And then I'm using this find first child function to find the part that is called tool. Okay, if it's able to find a tool under the player model, then the first thing I'm going to do is destroy that part, which gets rid of it. And then I'm going to change its coins value to its current value plus one. So in essence, this is just giving the player a coin. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and run our code one more time, and we'll take another look. Okay, so once again, this first one, if I bump into it, it gives me a coin. The second one gives me a random number of coins. Okay, and this third one teleports to a new location. And the fourth one, I have to pick it up to bring it to a selling location. Okay, and just a few things to keep in mind when you're making this. For your teleportation block, make sure that it's not anchored and there's no weld underneath it. If there is a weld, then it will prevent it from teleporting. The same for the object that you're going to be picking up. 
make sure that it's not anchored and there's no weld under the tool. And finally, if you want to make more of these parts, all you have to do is click on it, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, and then you can move it to whatever location that you want. And the nice thing when you duplicate it, it automatically copies the script so you don't have to rewrite it. And what I'm going to do at the end of this video is just go to each script individually again and kind of pause on it. That way, if you're trying to copy it down and I went too fast in the beginning, you have a chance to pause the video and just copy it down. So the first one I'm going to do is this one right here. This is the original one. Okay, the next one I'm going to go to is the second one where it gives you a random number of points. Okay, and this is the first part of it. And then in just a second, I'll scroll over. Okay, next is the teleportation one. Okay, this is the first half, and then I'll scroll over in just a second. Okay, and there's the rest of it. And finally, the last one, I'll open up the selling pad and we'll take a look at that script. Okay, this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.